Look, it's twofold. It's twofold. And and again, obviously, you know, I I, I didn't play or as uh, the name of the title of one of my favorite books as a kid because I was a big Howard Cosell fan. Yeah, I read his book. I never played the game. I never played the game was the name of his book because he was pointing out the the jockocracy that was happening in, in sports broadcasting. Remember that? Yeah. About all the players yeah. who were just coming off of the sideline and and – doing his job basically but at any rate I never played the game but I've been around the game and I've talked to a bunch of players for 20 some odd years so if I could suss this out it's twofold one is they're not gonna they can't turn the page and do the next game up until they know their guy is okay or at least on the verge of being okay or on the path to being okay they can't just go on without him while he's in the ICU. Easily or readily or at all. I don't know. Either those are the different grades of of how ready they can be. And they understand, you know, it's a sport. This is the league. This is the league that they've been dominating in many ways on many Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays that they've been in. And this is their championship season two. And they they... They need to hit the pause button on it because for them to just say, okay, we're just going to turn the page and just keep doing it while DeMar is on life support. That's half of it, if you will. And the other half is being ready to take that next snap. When they just saw that next snap has put their comrade in the ICU you know that's why Ryan Clark tweeted out that the next snap of of football is going to be really scary and I get it and I get it that again that veil that wall that these players have built up in their head and they place behind that wall in the recesses of their minds just how violent this sport is and how the next snap could be the last and what are you going to do if that happens and what You know, what do you do if you have to find a different career or, heaven forbid, you are so significantly hurt that it affects the way you live your life? And what's going to happen 30 years from now if I have effects from playing? And those thoughts are never at the forefront of anybody's mind when you're playing the sport. And you saw in real time on Monday night what happens when that wall is destroyed or that veil or that curtain is lifted in real time, right in front of them on the field of play in the middle of a game that they've worked themselves up to place this monstrosity and nightmare behind that wall. The wall just got destroyed right in front of them. And, I mean, what reserve is going to take for them to build that wall up again and go out and play a game? This is serious business. I understand, again, that a lot of folks out there are like, well, they're paid millions of dollars to do it, and it's a dream and all that, and that's true. But as we've been talking about, the theme of this week has been they're human beings. Just wanted to throw that out there. Millions of dollars won't affect your emotional state. I mean, it doesn't matter how much money that you have once you see right. something like that it, it, it's it's yep. the this is i just kind of wanted to lay out for what for everyone what what needs to be surmounted resurrected you know absorbed and then eventually executed it's it's a lot 